What's up YouTube? My name is Marco and welcome back to the Distinct Tone Pieces YouTube channel. Today I have another watch review for you guys. We're going to be looking at the Rolex reference 126 600. It's the 50th anniversary sea dweller. This watch is truly an iconic timepiece and one of the most legendary dive watches that Rolex have ever released. There's so much to talk about when it comes to this watch so let's get straight into the review. Rolex watches are modern status symbols with a distinct five-pointed crown adorning the wrists of the world's most successful individuals. This is no accident and is thanks to the brand's highly regarded heritage earned from creating superior timepieces for professionals. Rolex has always been proud to be associated with some of the world's most noteworthy exploits. Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay's ascent of Everest, Chuck Yeager breaking the sound barrier, Mercedes Glides crossing the English Channel, Roger Federer becoming the champion of champions in tennis, to name a few. In coherence with other models from the brand, the Rolex Sea Dweller's history is also closely associated with an exceptional achievement. Prior to its official release, Rolex had already introduced their first waterproof case back in 1926. They were already producing the Submariner since 1953 and had brainchilded the Deep Sea Special, famed for setting the world record depth of 10,911 meters in 1960. Just under a decade later, in 1967, the Sea Dweller was born with the reference 1665 as a response to the specific needs of professional divers. Developed in collaboration with French diving company Comex, the initial 1665 had a depth rating of 500 meters or 1650 feet and was the first watch to feature Rolex's helium escape valve, a signature groundbreaking innovation that allowed the watch to withstand the pressures of deep sea saturation diving without damaging the crystal. Over the years through the 70s and 80s, Rolex continued to improve the Sea Dweller, increasing its water resistance and its durability through innovations such as the trip lock crown and they also improved its movement. Did you know that at the time Rolex used to use radium and tritium for volume on their watches? These materials have dangerous radioactive properties and naturally Rolex had to phase them out in the 90s and early 2000s. They then started using superluminova and chromolite instead. Radium and tritium weren't the only things to be phased out. In fact, Rolex completely ceased the production of the Rolex Sea Dweller in 2008. However, they continued to produce diving watches dedicated to professionals like James Cameron. The Sea Dweller was reintroduced in 2014 with the reference 116660, which had a very short production run. Over time, Rolex gained a pretty solid reputation for being a leading manufacturer of superior dive watches. Their most popular dive watch was the Submariner, which received a green bezel to commemorate its 50th anniversary in 2003. So you might wonder what Rolex did to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Submariner's big, stronger and more capable brother. The answer to your question is this watch. Rolex introduced the 126 600 in 2017 at Baselworld. The 50th anniversary Sea Dweller featured familiar single red lettering on the dial that pays homage to the first ever Sea Dweller and for the first time in history it featured a Cyclops lens which was quite controversial but we'll get into this later. The 2017 release of the Sea Dweller is still in production today but it's worth noting there's a Mark 1 and a Mark 2 version of this watch. The watch I have here today is the Mark 2 which you can tell by the presence of a small Rolex coronet between the words Swiss and made. There's also a minuscule difference in the font of the number one on the text of the dial. The Sea Dweller is a watch that has garnered the attention of die-hard enthusiasts who pay attention to every detail on these watches. Certain vintage references of the Sea Dweller have become highly collectible and those with Comex printed on the dial are trading in the hundreds of thousands. Let's get this beautiful Rolex box open and dive into the details. Housed in a striking 43mm case, the Sea Dweller is an imposing timepiece for those with bold character. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the Submariner 41mm and I think it's the perfect size for a dive watch, even though the watch truly comes in at 40.5mm. The Sea Dweller 126 600 essentially looks like a Submariner on steroids, but in a good way. The case has undergone vast improvements compared to previous Sea Dwellers and the refined case proportions sit perfectly between that of the Submariner and the bulky deep sea, catering to a demographic looking for a larger watch whilst remaining in the realms of normality for everyday wear. Personally, I find it sits 
wonderfully on my 7 inch wrist and even though the case is quite thick at 15.5 millimeters, it generally doesn't feel top heavy. If you have smaller wrists, I still wouldn't rule this watch out because the bracelet doesn't protrude the lugs like older models of this watch did, so it's naturally more ergonomic. I tried on one of Rolex's latest crazy releases, the 50mm Deep Sea Challenge, and I was surprised I could actually pull it off, even though I anticipated it would look ridiculously large in person. Sometimes photos and figures don't convey reality. The brushed and polished monoblock middle case is crafted from Rolex's oyster steel, which is smelted in their own foundry just outside of Geneva in Switzerland. Oyster steel belongs to the 904L steel family, known for its higher resistance to corrosion, which is of course very important for a watch that's designed to be used in salt water at high pressures. The 60 minute unidirectional bezel is of course a key feature of this watch, aiding safe and precise monitoring of dive and decompression times. It's made of black serochrome, Rolex's ceramic material, making it virtually scratch proof and creating a premium aesthetic. The bezel's color is unaffected by ultraviolet rays, seawater or water that is chlorinated, so it won't fade like aluminium bezels on vintage watches. The numerals and graduations are PVD coated in platinum and its mechanics are also exceptional. Let's take a listen. You get responsive feedback with each of the 120 clicks and the bezel won't turn by accident when knocked but it's still effortless to turn given the edges are exceptionally knurled to provide grip. The knurling on the bezel is one of those details about this watch that is discreet and perhaps underappreciated, but it truly exemplifies Rolex's level of detail when it comes to finishing. Let's talk about the signature feature of this watch, the helium escape valve. This valve located on the side of the case has a function which is often misunderstood. Even professional scuba divers are unlikely to encounter real world conditions which would require the use of the helium escape valve. This valve is dedicated to saturation divers completing work under the ocean for days or weeks. The fundamental issue saturation divers face underwater is that nitrogen, which makes up 78% of the regular air we breathe, has an anesthetic effect at high pressures. That leads to an effect called nitrogen narcosis, which is effectively a feeling that you are drunk which as you can imagine is probably not ideal when you're so deep under the ocean in risky conditions. Saturation divers live in dry specialized chambers and breathe specialized gas mixtures. To get around the issue of nitrogen narcosis, helium is used in place of nitrogen for the gas mixtures during saturation diving. Even though this sobers up divers and solves the issue of nitrogen narcosis, it creates an entirely new issue for their watches. After spending multiple weeks in a highly pressurized helium rich environment, the tiny molecules inevitably work their way past the watch's gaskets into the case. This doesn't cause problems for the watch as long as it stays under pressure, but the issues surface at the decompression stage. As air pressure returns to normal in the decompression chamber, the volume of the trapped helium molecules inside the case of the watch start to expand and apply pressure to the case from the inside. If the internal pressure in the case builds up enough, it can damage components and can pop crystals clear off their watches. This is a problem divers used to have before Rolex introduced the helium escape valve. The helium escape valve's purpose is to prevent this from happening by allowing helium to escape from the case. Divers actually used to unscrew the crown of their case to let helium escape from the watch. However, this wasn't a practical solution because debris and dirt would enter the case, requiring the watch to be serviced more regularly. The Sea Dweller 126 600 is waterproof to 1,220 meters or 4,000 feet. With these watches, we often glance at the crazy depth rating figures printed on our watch dial, but we don't stop to think about what they actually mean in reality. Let's put these numbers into perspective. 1,220 meters is approximately like stacking the shard in London on top of itself four times, or is the equivalent of putting the Empire State Building on top of the Burj Khalifa. So you can only imagine what going downwards into these depths of the ocean must be like. Let's be honest, for most of us who will probably put this watch to the test in a swimming pool or at the beach, any minimal depth rating would suffice. However, 
that's not the point. It's about Rolex proving what they can do. To have such a depth rating on a commercially available watch is super cool in my opinion and pays tribute to the brand's heritage. For a watch designed to be taken to extremes, it's of course expected that the Oyster bracelet ensures a secure fit. The three-piece links are solid and it's very comfortable with a brushed finish that is more scratch resistant than a polished finish. The Oyster bracelet from Rolex is the best suited to water activities and its name is derived from an oyster's watertight properties. More importantly, the glide lock clasp on this watch features a securement latch to ensure the spring-loaded lever doesn't come undone underwater. The reverse of the clasp conceals a useful glide lock mechanism, allowing you to adjust the length of a bracelet in 2mm increments up to 20 millimeters without tools. This is a great feature to have to adjust the watch when your wrist expands or contracts due to temperature variations, and it also helps with fine tuning. Rolex took the Sea Dwellers bracelet a step further when compared to a Submariner and included a dive extension link to make it even easier for divers to fit the watch over their wetsuit. You'll notice that the dive extension link has been taken out of the watch I have here today, which is probably advisable if you're not going to be using this watch for diving. Everything about this watch is special. Look at the case back. It's also in theme with the diving aspect of this watch. It reads Rolex Oyster Sea Dweller Original Gas Escape Valve, whilst leaving space for any engravings you might desire. The case back of this watch conceals an in-house officially certified Rolex Caliber 3235, providing superior performance above and beyond cost requirements. It keeps time to minus two plus two seconds, offers a 70 hour power reserve, meaning you can leave it stationary and it will keep running for 70 hours. And the watch is protected by a parachrome hairspring and high performance paraflex shock absorbers. Overall, it's a tried and tested movement that boasts 14 new patterns and a huge redesign from its 3135 predecessor to ensure excellent performance. Being a true tool watch, every design aspect of this timepiece has the end user in mind. The dial of this watch features legible hour markers in simple shapes such as triangles, circles and rectangles with a matte black backdrop to prevent the risk of any confusion underwater. In a blackout, you'll be the last one laughing. The innovative chromolite display offers uniform luminosity that lasts up to 8 hours which is double that of standard loom. This dial is a miniature work of art that is beautifully encapsulated in a scratch-resistant sapphire crystal with Rolex's famous Cyclops lens. The Cyclops lens was never previously featured on the Sea Dweller because the crystal used to be domed to allow the watch to go to greater depths. Even when Rolex eventually flattened the crystal, the Sea Dweller remained true to its heritage and still didn't have a Cyclops lens. When it was introduced on the model, it's safe to say a good portion of collectors were enraged. Some people generally don't like the Cyclops, whilst others felt the watch lost its vintage charm. One could argue the addition of the Cyclops lens is a means of Rolex demonstrating how far they've come to now have an improved glue that can withstand the challenges of the deep ocean. But rumours have it there's a secret Rolex don't want you to know about the introduction of the Cyclops lens. Certain sources theorise that when you remove the Cyclops lens and observe the positioning of the date wheel on the dial, the movement doesn't seem to fit the 43mm case perfectly and the alignment of the date wheel is off center relative to the plots on the dial. Could the introduction of the Cyclops have been a way for Rolex to make this movement fit the 43mm case? That might be food for thought for some, but personally I don't think it's that important. This is a great looking watch and the Cyclops lens is an important innovation created by Rolex which I think definitely deserves its place on this watch. The Rolex Sea Dweller 50th anniversary is not a watch for everyone. Firstly, its size definitely rules out a certain demographic of potential buyers and then as of recently Rolex also carefully select who they allow to purchase this watch. If you're spotted wearing this watch, it's likely to be recognized as a Rolex from afar, but only true Rolex enthusiasts will appreciate it for exactly what it is. The retail price of this watch is €13,250, £11,150 British pounds or US dollars It can be a process to get this watch from your AD, but if you are struggling, that's not too much of an issue since in 2023, it's available on the pre-owned market for around its retail price. At the peak of the market, this watch did command a premium, but it was still trading less than a Submariner. There's also a two-tone yellow gold variant of the Sea Dweller, which as the current situation stands, 
is much easier to obtain as your first purchase and is a watch your AD is likely to chase you to buy rather than the other way around. That seems to be becoming the case for many Rolex models which were previously unavailable. Whichever variant you go for, you will receive this watch in the standard Rolex packaging. A green box with a five-year international warranty card, manual, superlative chronometer tag, and a travel pouch just like this. Your AD will make sure to write the date of purchase on your warranty card and will remove the stickers from this watch before handing it over to you. Concluding my thoughts, I've always been a huge fan of scuba diving and water sports, so the heritage tied in with this model Sea Dweller is particularly intriguing to me. This watch is backed and inspired by science. I think it's incredible that the brand still creates crazy timepieces like the Deep Sea Challenge, which cater to hardcore divers. Since most of us aren't going to be exploring the depths of the Mariana Trench anytime soon, the Sea Dweller is a perfectly seasoned watch with just enough touches reminding us of Rolex's heritage whilst being proportioned just right so that you can get away with wearing it every day. It ignites emotions that the Submariner doesn't, transporting you to a realm of extreme exploration. If an educated watch enthusiast spots this watch on your wrist, they'll for sure know you have good taste. But it's a sleeper. All the hidden heritage behind details such as the font color, helium escape valve, the writing on the case back, and even the appearance of the Cyclops lens are unapparent to the uneducated eye. Even the matte black dial makes it that touch more subtle than the Submariner. It's the sub's bigger, more confident brother that doesn't need to shout to show its presence and capabilities. It could well be perceived as a disproportionate Submariner in the eyes of some, and that's what's great about this watch. It's not a hype piece. You buy it for your own satisfaction. This watch has been crafted with impeccable attention to detail, the movement is excellent and all of its design features have been carefully considered to create a comfortable and refined end result, trumping all of its modern predecessors from the Sea Dweller range. It's the ultimate dive watch from Rolex and in my opinion it doesn't get much better than the 126-600. Let me know what you think about this Rolex Sea Dweller and if you enjoyed this video make sure you leave me a like, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also, be sure to check out our website, distinctimepieces.com. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.